So if you have a little Troy built 30 inch rear engine mower that's not running so good, I'm going to show you how to take the carburetor off and get it all cleaned up without disassembling half the mower in the process. Okay, so without further ado, let's dive right in. All right, so to get this carburetor off of here, you really don't have to take all this red plastic stuff off of here. I took mine loose because I was working on something under here anyway that was unrelated to the carburetor, so it's still loose. But it would be helpful to get this back one off of right here. There's just two screws that go back here underneath this. Just take those out and that just comes off in two seconds. Now your air box may have a screw tab that's underneath here, underneath the cover for the top of the motor. Mine did, but I don't have to take all this apart. I can take the carburetor off without removing all this. You can get to every screw except this one. I don't know what genius engineer thought of that, but anyway, they did. All right, so here's this tab right here that goes underneath. I know you can't see it, but it's right here. And that's why you can't get all this off because of that one tab. Now yours might not have a bolt in it, but mine sure does. So there's a screw right here, just a Phillips screw. Just take this out. And that's all you really have to do up here. All right, next we'll need to remove these 10 millimeter nuts right here. And there's one on the back side that you may not be able to see, but it looks just like this. I find it helpful to hold your hand under it to kind of catch it. And there it is. If you're finding any value in this video, please subscribe to this channel. I come out with videos like this as often as I can. All right, so next you'll want to take these two bolts out where it goes into the side of the head. So next you'll want to undo your fuel line from this bracket right here, and then go ahead and pull this out. Being careful of the gasket that goes right between here now there's no gasket here on mine right now because I've already taken it out, but there is a pretty fragile gasket right there that you should be aware of. And another one right here, as you can see right here. So be careful of those, try not to tear them, otherwise you might have to buy new ones. And that's out of the way. Okay, so this next one is a little bit tricky, it's the choke linkage. You can see it right through there, right? You have to snap that thing back right there, take something and kind of push it. There we go, we got it. And then lift that rod. There we go. All right, so for this next one, you'll want to get your fuel line on the other side of the clamp. There we go. And then you'll want to disconnect the throttle linkage which the spring on this one is just not that great, but just be careful with it. If you've got some pliers like this, that would be helpful. There we go. We got it out. So it goes right here. That's the throttle linkage and that's the throttle spring right there. So now I usually just pinch off the fuel line. Might need to take a pair of pliers to break it loose. And there we go. Try to put this up out of the way. If it's up, it can't leak out. Just carefully work them loose. And the way the plugs are made, you can't get them backwards. All right. All right, so we've got this thing laid out on a clean piece of cardboard. Now I've already loosened the bowl and drained the gas out of it, but this right here is just a 9-16 socket. It will fit it. So let's take that off of there. Set these aside, take the bowl off. Now I've already gone through and cleaned this carburetor. All right, here's a shot of the original. It was full of sediment. A lot of sediment. Uh, it, it was a lot of trouble to get that out of there. So I drained the and the and the gas in the gas tank was clean. You know, you look in the gas tank, but I think what was going on was is there was some sediment in the fuel lines. 
So I went ahead and replaced the fuel lines, the fuel filter. I drained all the gas out and replaced it with fresh gas. So if you see anything in your gas tank that looks like water or any kind of dirt or grime or anything, you might need to pull your gas tank out and get that clean and replace the fuel lines if you think you, uh, you have a problem like that. Now right here, we have a rubber O-ring. Now when you're cleaning this thing out, if you've got a bunch of yellow stuff around the edges like this right here, what you can do is take some steel wool like I've got right here and spray a little bit of uh, carburetor cleaner on the steel wool and go around here and clean that and take the steel wool to get inside of these nooks and crannies down here. All right, take the steel wool and push it down there and then push it around with a screwdriver so that you can get all these areas clean. But this little black washer right here, you gotta be real careful with that and remove it. Otherwise, when you're cleaning it, right, with a whatever you're cleaning it with, this thing is gonna wind up blowing across the yard and you'll never see it again. So be careful with that, all right? Let's take the bowl or the uh, float out of there. Now right here, we've got a rubber tip and you might have to take some steel wool and very gently clean that, right? Very gently. And down inside of here, you might have to uh, take a little piece of steel wool and then take something small so that you can go in there and turn it. You know, you want to turn that around to try to clean the inside of that brass right there. Now here we have our main jet and our emulsion tube. So what you might need is a screwdriver. And sometimes screwdrivers have like a wedge shape to them, right? And I put this one on a grinder to kind of cut that wedge down so that it'll fit down in there, like so. And you can get that jet loose. Once you get it loose, turn it upside down and just kind of do that. Now if that doesn't fall right out of there, just like it just did right there, you'll see the emulsion tube sticking up in here. All you got to do is take something and push it down to get it started, and it usually will come right out. And that's not quite it. There's one other thing right here. Take this off and clean it. This is your idle screw. Take this out first, and right here, pop this off of here very gently because there's a rubber o-ring there that you don't want to damage, right? So we see, if you can see that, we have another jet down in there that you're going to want to clean out, and also you're going to want to clean out right here. Now what I would usually do on this is take some carburetor cleaner and spray it through every hole that you can find, right? Every one. Here's some more. And then go behind that with some air and blow through those holes. Over here, we have some little bitty holes right here, and you're gonna wanna take a set like this, right, that comes with all these little different size rods, and find the little tiny one that fits, and then put the rod through each one of these holes right here. Don't forget about these holes. And then blow some cleaner through there, and blow some air through there. Now here, on this emulsion tube, You'll want to do the same thing. Use these little different size rods to go through every hole, just like so. And after you do that, blow some brake clean or carburetor cleaner, whatever you got, through those holes and then follow that up with air. All right, go through every one of those. Go through the middle, right? Go through the middle. Go through your main jet, make sure that's clear. Blow that out. Do the same thing with that, make sure that's all clear, and then blow it out with air. All right, so once you get all that stuff clean, then you're gonna wanna put everything back together. But before you do, you wanna take out this solenoid and test it and make sure that it's any good. These things should move very freely, like that. If you push that down and it takes a week to spring back, then it's junk. I've tried cleaning these things up. I've tried oiling them. Nothing ever seems to work. 
So if it doesn't respond, just like you just see right there, then it probably needs to be replaced. You can also plug this into those two wires that you disconnected it from on the motor and turn the key on and off and watch that plunger move back and forth to make sure the magnet's working right. There's a tiny little O-ring here that may be hard to replace if you break it. So you wanna be careful when you're pushing that back down in there. I would take some oil and put just a drop on that O-ring. Slow and steady is the key on that. Don't get in a hurry. And just kind of push until it seats all the way down. All right, now I'm gonna go ahead and put this thing back together exactly the way that I showed you how to take it apart, including mounting it to the engine. It's all the same, no difference. All right, so let's see how this thing is gonna run. All right, runs like a champ. I hope this video has been helpful for you. Thanks for watching.